Hey guys, I'm Vasu and welcome to my YouTube channel Not For Faint Crafted. If you are completely new, welcome and if you're not, welcome back. So today I am super excited to share with you these three DIY candles and candle holders that I've made, which was super quick and easy to make. And the reason why I love how these turned out so much is because I also repurposed items from my very own kitchen to give these candles and candle holders a bit of an edge. And I'm so thrilled with how they turned out. I really hope you love them too. And even though I've made candles before, by no stretch am I an expert and I know for a fact if I can create these you can too so whether you're trying to search how to make candles as a beginner or whether you want to set up a side business and sell candles as well I hope I've left you feeling inspired by the end of this video but yeah if you do love this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comment section below but also if you're not a subscriber already then don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that whenever I post a new video you should be able to get that update in your newsfeed but yeah that's it from me I'll head straight to the DIYs and I'll see you at the very end So for this DIY you're going to need a bunch of things, you'll need some wax flakes, so the type I used were 100% pure soy wax, you'll also need a tin of some sort, so I used this beautiful two tier hot chocolate tin, you'll also need a stove, a pan, some water, you'll also need a Pyrex jug, some weighing scales, a wooden spoon so that can help you stir the wax when it's melting, you'll need some wooden skewers, some lavender essential oil as well as lavender buds which I purchased from Hobbycraft. You'll also need some scissors, two candle wicks and I completely forgot to add it in here but you'll also need a thermometer and you can buy these specific types of thermometers for soap making and candle making as well. So firstly I just wanted to show you the tin that I'll be using and for the purpose of this DIY I'll be creating the candle itself in the bottom part of the tin. So the very first thing you need to do is calculate how much wax you will need to melt. So the first thing you need to do is pour some water into the tin that you're using up to the point where you want your candle to stop and then what you want to then do is transfer this water into your Pyrex jug and see what the measurement is so for me it came up to roughly 400 milliliters of water and then there's a simple formula to it all you need to do is just multiply 80 percent to the amount of water you have and then that will give you the amount of grams of wax you will need to melt so for me 400 milliliters of water times that 80% will give me 320 grams of wax. And so next I split the wax into two batches and with the first batch I placed this into the Pyrex jug and into the pan filled with water. At this stage the water was still cold because I wanted this to gradually heat up so that it could slowly melt the wax. And then next using the back end of your wooden spoon you want to stir your wax whilst it's melting and I completely forgot to film this part but I was also using the thermometer and was checking this intermittently throughout the whole process to make sure that the wax wasn't over exceeding 80 degrees centigrade. And when your wax reaches around 70 degrees this is the time where you can then drop in your lavender essential oils I'd say about four to five drops is enough because you don't want to overdo it. And then once you've added in your essential oils, you just want to switch off your stove and leave your wax to cool down. But in the meantime, you can take your candle wicks, dip the bottom ends into the wax and then place this in the center of your tins. And if you find that the candle wicks are unsturdy, then you can use some sticks, or in my case, I use some skewers to hold this down in place. And then once your wax has cooled down to around 50 degrees centigrade, you can then pour this into your tin. However, if the heat of the wax is making your wicks unsturdy again, you can hold this in place with whatever you have at hand. And then when your wax is around halfway to fully cooling down, you just want to take your skewers and then poke holes all around your wicks and then that will release air so it could avoid sinkholes forming around those wicks. 
And then when that fully cooled down, I repeated the step again of fully heating up the wax, adding in the essential oils, leaving it to cool down to around 45 to 50 degrees centigrade, and then pouring this remainder wax into the tin. And again, if you feel like your wicks are unsturdy, then you can use your skewers or whatever you have at hand to hold this in place. And I guess while your wax is still in its liquid form, but you can see it's starting to cool down and solidify, you want to then take your lavender buds and sprinkle this all on the top. And the reason why you want to do it at this stage is so that it doesn't sink to the bottom, but also it will be secure in place when it does fully dry up. And once your candle has finally cooled down, it should look something like this. But if you're like me and you made a bit of a mess and you poured some wax on the sides, this is the time to scrape it off. And then next, what you want to do is take your scissors and then cut the excess wicks on the top. And your candle should look something like this. And if, like me, you're working with a two-tier tin and you're trying to figure out, okay, well, what can I add in the second layer of that tin? You could either create a separate candle or, if like me, you can add in Epsom salts because I thought this would be the perfect combination if you wanted to gift this to a friend or for your mum or whoever. Or even if you want to keep it to yourself, it would be perfect for like a mini spa treat. Once you've figured out what to do with the second layer of your tin, if you have a second layer, then your combi candle should look something like this. So this DIY is very similar to the first DIY, however, I didn't use any essential oils or wax pellets or flakes for this candle. Instead, I bought some um, shop made tea lights, which already had this essential vanilla oils added to it. Um, so I thought it's easier, it's cheaper, so let me try and give this one a go and see if I can get the same effect. And yeah, again, for this DIY, I'm going to repurpose some miniature tea tins that I have um, kept. And I think they're perfect to create these like miniature candles. They're so cute. Um, so I wanted to use this for my DIY. Again, the exact same process. What you want to do is you want to first measure how much wax you're going to need to melt. So firstly, I poured water into these miniature tins all together and then poured this into the Pyrex jug, which came to under 200 uh, milliliters of water and then again using that formula of the 200 milliliters of water times that 80 percent it then gave me the 180 grams of wax that i needed to melt and next what you want to do is separate your tea light candles from the actual foil casing that it comes in um, and then when you've done that it should look something like this then next, what you want to do is, with each uh, tea light candle that you have, you want to just break this into smaller pieces and remove those wicks from it, because you don't want to melt that. Done that, it should look something like this, but actually, in this picture, you can see the pieces are still quite big. So, as I was melting this, I actually broke it out just beforehand into much smaller pieces as well, because what I found was the smaller the pieces, the easier it would melt. And next you want to weigh your broken candle pieces and make sure you've got enough wax for your DIY project. And then next you want to place half of your broken candle wax into that Pyrex jug and then again you want to place that into a pan filled with water but you want to also make sure that when you place your Pyrex jug into that pan that the bottom of the pan is not touching the bottom of your Pyrex jug and hopefully the water that you have in the pan should be enough to let it float. While the wax is melting, you want to start stirring this and then again add in that thermometer just to make sure that the wax doesn't overheat and reach above 80 degrees centigrade. And once your wax has melted and you're happy with this, you want to leave this to cool down. But again, the first step is just dipping your wicks, the bottom end of your wicks, up in the wax and then centering these in the center of your tin. And then next you want to take the remainder wax that's melted in your Pyrex jug and pour this into your tin, reaching halfway through of each tin. Again, because of the heat of the wax, it did make the wicks feel a bit unsturdy. So what I did was I just used a few skewers to hold this down in place. Again, once the wax was closer to cooling and solidifying, I then took skewers and then just poked holes all around the wicks of each tin just so that it could release that air and I can avoid any sinkholes when creating these candles. 
Next, taking the final batch of wax pieces that I had from those broken tea light candles, I then melted this and again, whilst it was starting to turn from solid to liquid, I then reduced that heat, placed in the thermometer and then started stirring this. And then after leaving this wax to cool down to around 50 degrees um, centigrade, I then poured the remainder wax into each of those tins. And yeah, once the wax had fully cooled down, I just took some scissors and snipped off any excess wick that was sticking out and my beautiful miniature British tea tin candles were finally ready. For this final DIY, you're going to need a bunch of things. So you'll need two glass bottles of your choice. You'll need a stove, a pan, some water, a Pyrex jug, your thermometer. You'll also need two taper candles, which I chose um, in white. And I also repurposed some of the remainder excess tea light broken white candles that I used earlier on. And then you'll also need two foil sheets. So firstly, I just took those broken tea light candle pieces um, and then placed that into the pirate's jug. And then again, in a pan filled with water, it doesn't need to be hot at this stage. It's better to have cold water and then let this slowly heat up in the process so it can slowly melt the wax. Um, but because I didn't use that much wax for this project, it actually melted quite quick. And again, as your wax is melting, you just want to stir this and use your thermometer to make sure it doesn't go over the 80 degrees centigrade. Once your wax has melted, you just want to switch off your stove and leave this to cool down. But in the meantime, I just took those two taper candles and then started screwing this into the bottom so that it could fit snug. And then yeah, if you find it's making a mess, you can just use some tissue to just gently clean around your bottle. And then next you just want to take your foil cut out and place your bottle on top of this. And then taking that wax melt, you just want to carefully pour this all around the top of the lid of your bottle and around that candle. And again, using that foil cut out, you can carefully swivel this around so that your wax is evenly distributed around the bottle. And so the good thing about pouring wax onto the foil itself is that when it does cool down, you can easily peel it off and you can then repurpose this wax for another one of your candle DIY making projects. And so yeah, finally, when everything had cooled down and I was happy with it, I then just peeled off the bottles from the foil sheets and it ended up looking something like this. Hey guys, so I hope you loved those DIYs as much as I had enjoyed making them. If you do, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you're not a subscriber already, then don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that whenever I post a new video, you should be able to get that update in your newsfeed. But yeah, that's it from me. I hope you have an incredible day and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.